No, I actually don't. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there are just so many. There are just so many causes that that, that that we work for, that we stand for, that we fight for. It's, it's, uh, and and, and you can, we can never rest on our laurels. You know, it's never over. The battles never end. Uh, the corporatists are always looking for the loopholes to get us. So, so what had happened, uh, we filed the lawsuit, it was the North Coast Rivers Alliance, was the lead plaintiff, uh, also named plaintiff, Stop the Spray Marin, the California Alliance to Stop the Spray back a bit based in Santa Cruz. Um, who else did we have? The mayor of, uh, of Richmond, uh, Gail McLaughlin. Uh, we, had, we have Larry Bragman, uh, who was Fairfax mayor at the time. Um, who else did we have? We have uh, uh, Albany, uh, Albany uh, mayor. Um, uh, 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 Lieber, what's his first name? Robert. I can't think of. Robert. Robert. Robert Lieber. Robert Lieber. Um, and we, 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 were re we had representatives from, uh, from nine San Francisco and Monterey Bay Area counties as named, as named plaintiffs in the lawsuit. And so we thought it was a slam dunk. I mean, uh, uh, the EIR that the, that, this, that the California Department of Food and Ag prepared said, well, um, uh, we, we, we've done all the research, and uh, we find that there's no adverse impact if we if we were to aerial spray uh, in any any of the areas uh, within our jurisdiction. Um, and then what happened? There was such a outcry and a fear uh, after they made that announcement in Sacramento. They approved the environmental impact report that said, you know, aerial pesticide spraying, it's really safe. It's not a big deal. Uh, and then and then the outcry, and then they said, oh, well. We're going to take aerial pesticide spray off the table. So when it came to the court decision, I was in Sacramento County Superior Court. It's been a few weeks now. It's actually been a month. And uh, and and, and uh, uh, right off the bat, the judge said to us, uh, "Well, they're not going to spray. They already said they're not going to spray. They took it off the table. That should satisfy your your concerns, right?" We said, "What do you mean satisfy our concerns? Of course not. You, there's an EIR that says aerial pesticide spray has no adverse impact." We can't have that. It's you know it's wrong. And uh, the judge kind of fooled around a little bit, and, you know, chatted back and forth with mostly with the with the de deputy attorney generals or two of them representing the California Department of Food and Ag. And finally, he said to them, he said, "Well, well, well, uh, uh, counselors, uh, would you stipulate uh, uh, if I ruled in your favor? Would you stipulate?" that you're not going to aerial spray the people of California for at least seven years. Oh, and so the two deputy ADs turned around and all the CDFA people were sitting behind them in the gallery, that's where I was back there, and, and, and uh, they said, oh, would you stipulate that? Oh, yes, we'll stipulate, of course we will. And they turned around to the judge, your honor, we'll stipulate that, we will not spray for seven years. And, uh, and so the judge said, well, problem solved. And Steve Volker and, and, the, and the attorney for uh, Earth Justice both say, y y the problem's not solved, you have an environmental impact report, that, that's, uh, th th that's wrong, it's flat out wrong, and you need to, you need to, you need to, 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 to send that EIR back to the California Department of Food and Ag, you need to, you need to end the project right now. Um, so the final result was, he ruled in their favor. We kind of thought that was going to happen because when you're in court, in your courtroom, and you can tell the kind of questions the judge is asking, you know where the whole thing's going, and, and it wasn't looking good for us. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, the ruling came out, and uh, uh, our choice is uh, is accepted or or appeal. And so um, uh, there are there are four main reasons we have to appeal. First of all, the, the California Department of Food and Ag's EIR allows aerial spraying, no matter what that judge says. Uh -huh. Under CEQA guidelines, section 15153, the CDFA could approve aerial spraying based on this EIR at any time without any CEQA notice, number one. Uh -huh. Secondly, the CDFA's EIR rejects rejects less impactful alternatives and mitigations on the grounds they would not achieve the eradication goals of the project. Even though CDFA belatedly conceded, as we had contended all along, that eradication was impossible and that at most, long-term containment was the only realistic objective. Third, there is no evidence whatsoever that LBAM poses any economically significant threat to the California agriculture, and thus the entire premise of LBAM control program is baseless. 
you know, what the California Department of Food and Ag has done to, to farmers in this in this state is they've quarantined their crops because they found light brown amber. They couldn't sell their they, they couldn't get their crops to market, and that's how that's what hurt them. That's why they lost business because because the state quarantined the products and wouldn't let them sell them. Uh, uh, there was no damage. There was absolutely no damage whatsoever. And then. Um, Finally, the non-aerial spray components of the California Department of Food and Ag's ALBAM program and its, its ostensible mitigation measures that were approved pose substantial uh, unstudied impacts on human and environmental health. And that's Hercorn bioflakes, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, truck mounted spraying, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the so-called twist ties and the pheromones that they're going to put out there. Um, uh, the judge allows all that to continue, and, 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 and those products have never been tested, they've never been proven safe, and, and that's, that's our whole argument. And the judge just dashed our argument, basically told us to go home. So, so we're, we're going up to the Third District Court of Appeals, we're trying to raise $10,000, that's our goal. You know. And again, you know, the, the issue, here's the lawsuit, if anyone would like to read it, I, I'm sure, not the, it's, it's the uh, judge's decision, uh, terrible decision, and it's going up to the Third District Court. The North Coast Rivers Alliance, you know, we, 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 we function between Carmel and the Oregon border. And there's a Trinity River up there, and half of the Trinity River, our North Coast Trinity River, is diverted over to the Sacramento, and and then it's shipped south, and the Westlands Water Water District sucks it out, and that's the other lawsuit that's going on that we're up on the pier also uh, for the salmon folks, so that, that's an issue we're fighting with the Westlands. But, you know, the residents were, were big players, uh, with, with Schwarzenegger, the big players with uh, Westlands Water District. Uh, the Resnicks own more more public water. Have, they have they have public water in private hands. They have they have over over a million acre feet of water of our water that they were given by I think former Governor Gray Davis, and uh, and and they've got it sitting in underground cisterns in the uh, in, in the Central Valley. But that's public water that they now own. They were given to. It was, it was given to them by the state of California, so it's a constant battle. It never ends. It never ends. There's kind of a common thread through all of these, which is um, the, who is the free market free for? Is it free for Monsanto to put their industrial products into the market, or is it free for consumers to have a choice to say no? So when we talk about a free market, it needs to be free for consumers and citizens. And I think that's what these fights are about. It's about putting democracy over freedom. It's life, liberty, and the pursuit of justice. Life is first. And to protect our own lives and to be able to have a choice in what we eat, what we're exposed to, the decisions we make are just fundamental. And so, you know, Proposition 37, that's what that's about, stopping the spray, that's what that's about. Smart meters, that's what that's about. Democracy over corporations, democracy shaping the technology that's going to come be developed and come into our communities. And so, you know, um, when Frank says the battles never end, they never end because everything changes, but the battles continue and the conflicts between uh, corporations, organized money, and the health and welfare of the people, that's, that's eternal. And that requires our vigilance. And uh, it's so great to have Frank in the community. I mean, uh, to really, it, he's just been incredible in organizing these events and bringing us together socially, politically, and in every other way. So I just want to say thanks to Frank and Ronita. Um, just returning to LVAM, I, I, um, the other thing is, just to let you guys know, our science heroes have not abandoned us. Um, Jim Carrey and Dan Harder, who some of you may be familiar with, they've been working on a paper for about a year, which is getting ready to be published in some prestigious scientific journal, and it's a series of questions that, for the technical working group, and it's questions, big questions going forward about how that organization ought to work. So I want everybody to know here that even the scientists are still at it as well. And I thought that would be a bit of encouragement for everybody. Thank you. Well, thank you, Pauline. You know, uh, 
Dan Harder, Daniel Harder, uh, what, what was uh, what was he? An entomologist? Uh, he was the head of UCSC Arboretum. He was head of the Arboretum at UC, at UC Santa Cruz, and he lost his job because he stood up to to the power structure uh, on Elbam. Uh, Jim Carrey had had, had, had so much seniority and and, and, and it's, 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 it's so well established with the UC system, they couldn't touch him. If they could have gotten rid of Jim Carrey, they got to rid, rid of Jim Carrey too. But he's still there, he's still at UC Davis. Uh, he's the entomologist and he, uh, uh, he just do a fabulous work. So uh, battle goes on. So let's hear some more music. Yeah.